Hey, hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and uh, we are very fired up because we've got Ray Higdon here and for another session of the Life on Fire Virtual Summit. And so what I love about Ray is that um, he has a heart of gold. Um, he's actually the one that's responsible for Kevin Harrington being on the Life on Fire Virtual Summit that's coming up. And he's just, you know, he's a guy that has a generous heart. You know, he's willing to give first. And I think that's a just in business, you don't come across that often. So, you know, he's uh, a kind of guy where he's al always out to build relationships and to give. And I think that's one of the many reasons why he's built such a big and amazing business. And what I love about Ray as well is that, you know, he's going to be sharing some of his best marketing tips and strategies and also how he's living what we call a life on fire, where he's loving what he's doing, you know, for work. He's helping others and he's having a great process. So, you know, he's having a great journey along the way. It's not just 100 hour work weeks, you know, so he's got a great lifestyle too. And he's got an expertise in marketing in different forms, a background in network marketing, got to the top of uh, of uh, of that industry, and it then teaches others. So, without further ado, my man Ray Higdon, how hey, goes hey. it? Hi, it's going awesome, man. Honored to be here. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, well, sweet. We're we're excited to have you here, and um, and I'd love to just kick things off and just and have you just catch us up on you know what you're working on now, and then we're going to kind of tap into you know your your background journey, and then work to grab some of those marketing nuggets that you have. Muted. Okay. Let me unmute. Oh, okay, now you can hear me. All right, cool. Um, so, so yeah, you know what we do now is we have a we have a coaching and training business that basically services internet marketers, network marketers, people in direct sales, and basically teaching them how to generate leads, how to recruit more reps, get more sales, and become top earners in whatever opportunity they they want to. So we have um, you know we have a lot person just starting and then we have more advanced coaching and masterminds for those that are you know maybe further along in their career awesome and what I love is I mean that's a tight niche you know you've you've taken yeah. the business coaching drilled it down to network marketing specifically um, which is so key to narrow your niche and so tell us about that process you know why network marketing you know, I, I never planned on it. Um, I didn't plan on network marketing. I had some, come, you know, some of the same stigmas and hangups with with network marketing that I think you know some people do. And um, you know, I had you know gotten into real estate, done really really well, and then when the market changed, uh, lost it all. And a buddy introduced me to to network marketing a few few years ago, and I decided, hey, what the hell? You know, I tried uh, my own real estate investment business. I had failed in an advertising franchise, and I just said, hey, I'm going to run with this thing. And what what I learned in the process and in the journey is it's such a low risk, low overhead way for you to generate income. And so I just decided to to rock and roll with it. Um, was the number one income earner in my last company, earning over a million in commissions. And you know now we've built a you know multi-million year coaching and training business as well. And and so as far as network marketing goes, I, I think um, what's so interesting is you know I've got a background in it as well, and then I you know. Um, it's almost like I listened to so many people around me about the stigma and things, and went into other industries and realized, you know what? It, I mean, it was the whole business in a box. I mean, it was like the amount of stuff you have to learn and do on your own to create your own products and services. And it, there's so many people making great income. And so, what would you say, you know, for someone that is in network marketing or someone that's building it, you know, how, you know, what did you do to create such growth? Or, you know, what are some of the tips to growing a network marketing business? Yeah, you know, we've learned so much along the way. Um, you know, when I first started, I thought it was, you know, probably like a lot of people, I thought it was just about sales and sell, 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 sell. And, you know, what I learned is you have to you have to train in a way that you're actually training others. So it's not just providing an answer, but teaching people to teach so that you can start having more duplication and having people, you know, expand your business. Um, you know, there's two main categories of, of building really... I mean, really, any business. Um, there's prospecting and there's marketing. So marketing is more passive. You do something, you hope an unnamed individual reacts or responds to it. Prospecting is you go out and hustle and get the business. So when I started blogging, I didn't know what I was doing. It was really horrible, and it was you know an ugly site, and people told me it was ugly. Um, so I, I didn't have leads funneling in. So I had to go out there and get the business. And you know, some people have heard my story of how I went out there and got 20 no's a day, and you know, hey, I did. I was in foreclosure. I need to make money. So, you know, now we generate, you know, thousands and thousands of leads a month. So we don't have to do that. But 
the two main categories are prospecting, go out there, hustle the business, online, offline, cold market, warm market, and then marketing, put out marketing that is value-based to attract people to you, and that's that's kind of what we teach. I love it, and I, I do want to drill down a little bit into sure. uh, into that story of where you were up against the wall, you know, yeah. and I, I just I feel like... Um, as entrepreneurs, I mean, there's you hear it time and time again. When you're up against a wall, the things you're willing to do to persevere. And sometimes, you know, I, I, you know, as a coach as well, I mean, I see entrepreneurs that aren't willing to go to that level. And so, tell us about that moment where, you know, you were up against the wall. You, you know, had to have that grit to just persevere. And was there something that snapped in your mindset, or was it just like an attitude of I, I don't care what has to happen, I have to prospect and I have to get people. But how did you, in as far as mindset goes? You know, how did you get yourself to a point where it was just like failure wasn't an option? Yeah, great, great question. There, there are a few things that attributed to that. You know, when I, I was pretty successful in real estate, I mean, I moved you know hundreds and hundreds of houses as a real estate investor. So I was flipping contracts, I was rehabbing, I was doing all that stuff. Uh, I opened a multi-state, a three-state uh, real estate investor association, had speakers rolling in, so I was doing the deal. And um, you know, 22 days a month, Vegas, Chicago, Phoenix, Miami, LA, speaking and selling real estate investor education. When that crashed, um, I really had a challenge of my identity because I had, you know, created this success persona, and you know, I was all smiles and you know, go to means, but you know, inside I was like what is happening and for about a year I was just kind of in this mental like um, coma you know where I was just like I hope things get better and you know I didn't like talk about this with people in fact nobody really knew this um, besides my girlfriend who's now fortunately my wife um, no one knew this and I think one of the you know punch in the stomach moments was I was having a, a family get together at my house and you know my mom there's a, a doorbell rang my mom went to the door and she came back and her face was all white and she was clearly upset. I thought, you know, okay, someone died here. And in reality, it was someone giving her my foreclosure papers. Wow. And, you know, she she didn't know because, you know, she's you know, she's had a tough life too. And I didn't want to burden her with that. But now, you know, that feeling of, of guilt, that feeling of disappointment, that feeling of because, you know, she used to always brag about me like, oh, he's really successful in real estate. And so, so many things happen there. And, and I think... And I've heard this said before, but you know the thing that's more powerful than depression is anger. <laughs> and I just got pissed off. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with me? You know, and and so I just, you know, that was kind of you know a moment that that helped me move forward. Um, there were a few other things that kind of kicked in, but you know that was definitely a contributing factor. And so I actually created a psychological trigger in that any time I thought about how bad life was or how I thought about how times used to be good, I picked up the phone. And I just like boom. And I'm, I sometimes I would just scroll and be like, hey, you open it, you know. And I, and I would I was I was connecting with people. I was telling people, hey, I'm gonna do it with or without you. I'd love to do it with you. So I was just monster. I was just a monster uh, action taker, monster. Just get this stuff done. And you know, I went to my girlfriend and said, hey, listen, next two years are gonna be sheer hell. I'm gonna lock myself in my office. I'm gonna get out of this, you know, over a million dollars in debt, and I'm gonna get out of this hole that I'm in. And it's not going to be easy, and you know you have everything going for you. Young, beautiful, college graduate. I got. I don't have that much going for me right now. And she decided to stick by me. Fortunately for me, and uh, hopefully for her too. But um, you know, times. You know that that's really all of those things helped me kind of just really go after it and and shed that that you know diminished view that I'd had of myself for about a year. Man, that that's so wild. That literally goosebumps just hearing it because <laughs> it, I think that. There's so many times that you know the there's a really rosy picture of being an entrepreneur and what and what's created are hyped up and and the reality is I mean you got to go through some serious tough times you know at, at at different times in your life and there's stages and seasons and and I th I think one thing you said there that I, I just want to put the exclamation point on is you had that psychological trigger as you called it mm -hmm. and you know when you had that thought in your head that was a negative thought you picked up the phone and you took action and persevered persevered and I just want to highlight that because you know, for everyone that, that's that's watching or listening or um, you know here live it's it, at the end of the day it's you reframed that negativity you know that fear or whatever however you were feeling at that moment and instead you just said you know what I'm gonna pick up the phone and I'm gonna go harder faster stronger you know angrier um, and that's that's so awesome you know to, to hear that and that, that to me is a, is a big nugget a big takeaway to, to, to 
change that pattern um, because it's easy. It's easy to get funked out as an entrepreneur, especially, I, I mean, you, did you say a million bucks in debt? Oh, yeah, well, well over a million dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, when, it was funny. When, we came, when I kind of came out of the uh, financial funk, uh, my CPA, he asked me, he goes, he goes, man, you, you really, you know, you're really crushing it. He goes, but do you know how many foreclosures you have? I'm like, no. He's like, you have eight. I had eight houses that I lost in foreclosure, but I didn't. I didn't pay attention to that. I didn't pay, t pay attention to the paperwork coming. I paid attention to making money. I paid attention to building my business. And you know, now it's more about you know following my passion, my purpose, my vision, all of that. In the beginning, it had to. I had to make money. I couldn't. I was just sick of being in that that you know space. And in, in, there's in what I I think what's going to be cool is as we transition. I think that. There's a part of you that said you just have to basically pound it out and make money. And I want to drill down and just into a couple of things that you did there. And then I want to hear about that transition where you started to really, you know, getting into more of your life's work and your purpose. Because sometimes as much as I am an advocate for people finding their purpose up front, sometimes if you're in that upside down mode like I was and like you were, you don't have a choice. You, you sometimes just have to put in the work and put in the labor to make it happen. And, you know, in in that mode of just having to you know cover costs and and get out of debt, what did you what would you say your your biggest marketing weapons were at that point? You know, uh, is it just the the prospecting and just taking action, or was there anything else inside of that? So in in the beginning, for sure, it w it was the prospecting numbers. It was just sheer numbers of me being bold, me not caring if someone said no, me just going after you know just going after everyone and. The, the thing that I did there is I never tried to close everyone, but I did see who was open. And so I would say things like, you know, hey, I'm going to do it with or without you. I'd love to do it with you, right? And, you know, so I, I painted a vision that I'm going over here. If you want to come with me, awesome. I'd love to lock arms with you. But if not, that's totally cool. And so I wasn't, I, I think sometimes people think of network marketers obnoxious and chase them. Um, I wasn't obnoxious in chase. I very quickly disqualified people, and then I might come back to them. However, in the background, and I didn't rely on this for my leads or my sales or anything. In the background, I started blogging because to me, blogging just made sense. Okay, you know, advertising. As soon as you stop, you know, paying for the ads, they go away. Uh, I don't know anyone that's bought something from a two-year-old email, right? But we make sales and get leads from two-year-old blogs all day long. And so I just thought, I'm like, you know what, that makes sense. Do a blog, start drive, start building my brand, start getting more people, you know, following me and build my list. Um, but in the first six months, I barely had any leads, but I just kept going. And there's a word that, you know, I've heard Jim Rohn say and, and others say that, that I really just, that it was kind of my word and it still is, until. I was going to do it until. And I was going to, you know, I didn't, I think a lot of people, they'll do something for 11 days. 14 days, 30 days, maybe six months. I didn't care how long it was going to take. I was going to do it until I became the top earner of that company, until I built a massive following and list. So I just kept doing it until. And now, you know, I mean, now we average on a bad month 2,500 free leads a month, and on a good month 4,500 free leads a month. And that's through, you know, organic, that's through people sharing. Um, sometimes big earners, they'll share it with their team. And so we, we generate a lot of leads now, but in the beginning, it just wasn't the, that, that just wasn't it. Um, so we did do blogging. We, we, we didn't get results right away, but um, now it's our main source of, of leads. Oh, that, it's, it's awesome. And I think um, what I love about this is it, it's just the true grit that you had to just get it done and take that fast action. Because, you know, if, if anyone that's in a cash flow crunch, and I've got clients that are there, and it, you just have to snap. You know, don't wait till you're, till you're near bankruptcy. Don't wait until, mm -hmm. you know, a near-death experience. It's like just snap, you know, out of whatever, you know, funk you're in now and just go, go at it and just be so deliberate. I mean, you, I mean, you just, you know, were so set on getting out of that debt, you know, when I was, I was 50 grand in debt and I thought my world was collapsing, you know, when I was, you know, 27 and then I had to do the same thing. And so, you know, it's like having that grit and working until, and then catch us up to now. So, um, I love that your expertise is in blogging because, you know, with me, I'm on the advertising side and we're just frankly bad at SEO and it's something that I think that this is going to be so awesome for people to 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 see how you're doing this but but tell us how um, blogging is getting you those those types of leads yeah and you know it's it's interesting because 
some some people, and we're just now learning and 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 using actually a resource that you suggested. Uh, we're just now doing some some paid advertising too. Um, obviously, you can't scale free, right? So you can scale advertising. So we are getting into that, and we've started doing that the last few months. And it's funny when people hear blogging. A lot of times, they do associate that with being you know SEO gurus. I'm not an SEO guru. I'm I'm really if there's anything detail oriented. I'm probably not that good at it, right? <laughs> but you know what we do is we pump the consistent value out there into the marketplace that we believe should be shared, that is valuable, that is you know attracting the right type of person to us, and and that's just what we've done. And so you know we have um, you know uh, we we've been doing blogging you know five to seven blogs a week every week for four years. And you know we teach the the main method of marketing that we teach in regards to content is what I call ILT, and that's invest, learn, teach. And so what I found myself doing anytime I read a good book, anytime I watched a great webinar, anytime I you know attended a course or attended an event, I would take my notes and I would transform those notes into blog content. And so I just kept doing that and doing that and doing that. People would, they would always ask me, where do you come up with all this content? And so I just start teaching the ILT method. It's just invest, learn, teach. So you invest in a course, you invest in a book, you invest in an event, you invest in coaching, you learn, you teach what you learn. So you know that, that's as simple as it is. And you know I find that when you're doing that, the person that you're trying to attract, um, you know, they'll want to share it. They'll want to connect with you. They'll they'll get value from you. And it's really it's how you can become an expert in any niche. So I I believe I could go into you know, whatever, plumbing, and, you know, just study plumbing, you know, exercises or strategies or whatever, and I could become a plumbing expert through an IL, you know, the ILT method that we teach. So that's, that's the main thing is, you know, we do, um, you know, I will have a keyword. Like if I'm going to talk about something, I think about concept first, then I go into the Google Keyword Planner and I just kind of look, okay, what's a phrase that gets some traffic that might get me some traffic? But I haven't, I mean, I've literally never done strength of competition analysis. I've never done, you know, what's, you know, what's a harder keyword to hit than another. Um, I just haven't done that. I've just pummeled it with sheer volume. Um, so I tell people, hey, if you want to do it better than me, do that stuff. You know, get keyword analyzer, get, you know, um, Market Samurai and, you know, and, and tools like that. We just don't use it. We've just been, you know, just pummeling the marketplace with value pretty consistently for quite a long time. That's huge, and, and I, I I love the ILT because at the end of the day, it it sounds to me like, you know, for you as an expert, you know, it's like the more that you're growing, you're growing as a person, you're growing as an entrepreneur, and then you're just taking that. It's almost like the cliff notes, you know, so you're able to yeah. leverage and almost monetize the courses and events and things you're doing. So that that's huge. So, um, anytime I'm taking notes right alongside the person, you you know, there's some good stuff happening. So cool. So ILT, I love it. And as far as the keywords and things, so, I mean, are, are you just just having that practical type of writing where you're thinking of what would your audience want, you know, and so you're looking at the content that you're learning in ILT. I mean, what goes, I guess, on in your mind when you're structuring a piece? Is it um, about that process, about, you know, how, how do I make it? What do I, what do, I do with it? So I, I think a lot of bloggers... Or, or people that are, that are wanting to become better bloggers, they look at, um, and many internet marketers do this too, they think very transactionally, right? And so they think, um, okay, how can I make a process, a transaction profitable, or what did I earn per that transaction? And a transaction could be, I put a blog out there, okay, how much did I make from that blog? Whereas I think community, all right? I think, um, how can, I, you know, how, can, how do I build a community of value that people want to be a part of? And so it's not, you know, it's almost, I really do think of, okay, would someone that comes into my community want to consume all of my blogs? And the answer is yes. And we actually, you know, learned from, you know, one of your friends, John Lee Dumas, uh, we recently started podcasting too, and I'll have people tell me, hey, Ray, I, I listened to all 150 of your podcasts. And that's how I think about blogging too, is I think about, okay, would my particular target market want to consume all of these different things? Uh, where people do this wrong, I think, is they get too tangled up in the keywords and they find a really cool keyword that maybe not be super congruent with their blog, and but they'll say, man, it's too good of a keyword to pass up. Um, that's not how I think. I think community. 
I think I want to get people into my community so that they're ensnared and they want to stick around the community forever. And so we don't look to, you know, how much profit do we make per blog or anything like that. We look at the community as a whole and look to constantly be, um, you know, vigilant with what we share. You know, I don't want to share anything that's going to send them off course. I want to share things that's going to add value to that community. That's where I really think. So I come up with a concept. And sometimes it's uh, you know recruiting, sometimes it's marketing, sometimes it's it's uh, mindset, and I, and I go into keyword, Google Keyword Planner, um, just Google.com forward slash sk tool, and it's a free tool. And I will type uh, my thoughts in there. I'll type like, okay, uh, you know, how to close more reps, uh, how to sponsor more people, or you know, how to make money using a blog, or something along those lines. And then I'll just look at the traffic, and I'll look at okay, what's what's getting more traffic than you know than than others. And I'll use that that keyword over there. So I never want something that's unnatural. I don't want something that, you know, sometimes you get these unnatural keywords. Um, that's for someone that's looking to transactionally grab someone from Google. Um, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at how do I make a community so people from the outside want to get in that community. And it, it just may, may happen they find it through Google, but it's really more about the community than any individual blog piece. You know what's um, what's interesting is I think that not, that method not only would make it take a lot of the pressure off someone of saying I don't know how to do all the keyword stuff or I don't yeah. know how to do SEO and essentially you're just doing it generally what what's in the best good for who you've identified as your target market you know and I I feel like that t takes a lot of the 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 challenge or the stress out of this equation off of it and you're putting them first as opposed to some crazy strategy to optimize and, and that that to me that's is the stuff that kind of is fly by night it's like the the more you try and game Google the the more you have to keep up and chase your right. tail and you're just you're just looking at it and say alright I want to build a community I'm gonna give them the best stuff and I, I just think that that's really it's just a really smart smart idea and a great flow um, outside of that you know what do you do to create community? So you've got the, the content. Um, are there things that you do? Um, is it getting them to engage on posts? Is it, do you have a private Facebook group? How do you take that community building to the next level with your content? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we have, I mean, we have lots of things. Um, there, there, are, there are multiple things within a blog that I suggest. One thing is to understand why you're blogging. You know, I mean, yes, I'm building a community, but to build that community, I need them on my list. And so the number one point of blogging is to build your list. You know, marketing is building your list, period. It's not getting my name out there. It's not branding. It's building my list. So you have to have a good giveaway. Have a good giveaway. I see people that, that are blogging consistently, but they don't even have a giveaway. Um, that is not a smart strategy. You need to keep building that list so that when you do a blog, you send it out to that list and you get them used to it. Like I'll have people email me, they're like, hey man, are you, are you gonna blog today? And you know, because they're so used to me sending out those, those blog posts and you know, and, and helping them out basically. So have a, have a great giveaway for sure. Um, have different ways to monetize it. Um, you know, I like, you know, I, I, you know, we have strategies like I'm, you know, I think I mentioned earlier, um, all the way from $7 all the way up to $50,000. So, you know, we have different products for different types of people and, you know, they're all, they all can kind of stair step into each other. And so have something that you can monetize. And, you know, it's, um, some people they have like one thing for sale. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a mistake. I think you need to have multiple things for sale at different um, price points as well because there's a community on the you know on the uh, on the free side right of value of attracting people to me and then there's a whole nother world on the inside you know like we have things like uh, top earner success school where it's you know three months of, of intense group coaching where we're mentoring people giving them assignments and we have just a fervent culture inside of that and so you can create these pockets of, of fervent cultures inside your different products and while also having that you know very excited um, you know there's a lot of people on my list that will never buy anything and that's okay you know if I'm helping them then awesome but then the people that do decide to step up and I would encourage people to treat you know their customers like that you know that's where you give even more love even more value even more you know assistance and and things like that so yeah I'm always saying you know always having a call to action you know, hey, um, you know, enter your name and email over there if you want my blah 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 blah, um, and also encouraging them to share with people, encouraging them to to comment below. Um, 
and and yeah, so really, really all, all the above there. Yeah, and on the uh, on your lead magnet or the free offer giveaway, um, how, how would you advise or give someone some advice on what they should put together? You know, are there things that you find that work the best um, for that lead magnet? Yeah, you know, it's um, I had uh, at, at our last mastermind that we had, we had uh, Ben Settle speak there, and Ben is, you know, I don't know if you know Ben. I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Ben, um, he is. Uh, I mean, he's he's one of the best copywriters in, in the world, and um, you know, like he wrote the pages for Magnetic Sponsoring, which oh wow, kind of beat for years, and they haven't. Um, you know, and he's he's just a really really sharp dude. And and one thing he said that I really really like, and I think more people need to understand it, is um, he said uh, if you have a weed killer, talk more about my crabgrass than your weed killer. Right, so it's talking about the problem of your prospect more than your solution. Right, so you want to you know agitate their problem a little bit more. So when I advise people to to create a giveaway, I I just tell them what would your what does your target market stay up late at night thinking about? Okay, what is it that they when someone challenges them on why they haven't had success? What is their first response to that? Okay, like what is that one thing that's really keeping them from from creating success? And you know, one thing that I found in in network marketing is a lot of people say, "Oh, I just I ran out of people to talk to," and that's why I created you know 29 sources of network marketing leads on audio for absolutely free. So it's all these different places to locate people to talk to, so you never run out of people to talk to ever again. And so you want to you know think about what is something that really bothers your target market. And you know, I I put mine in an audio. Um, you know, you can do audio, you can do video. I don't know too many people who've watched the same video a hundred times. But I know a lot of people that's listened to the same audio hundreds of times. So that's kind of I like to use audio when it's appropriate uh, in a giveaway. I think it's totally cool. I think you'll get more mobile opt-ins if you have audio. Just my opinion. Haven't tested it, but um, but yeah, you want to have something. What's going to make your target market toss and turn at night if they don't get? That's what you want. You don't don't have join my newsletter. Don't have you know, get daily emails from me. No one wants that. Okay, that's that's like your solution or whatever. They want something that is really going to benefit them. So don't just tell them what it is. Tell them what it does. You know, it's like I say, it is 29 sources of leads, but it does. You'll never run out of people to talk to, right? So that's that's very powerful for my target market, and you can use that kind of idea for your target market. That's huge. That's huge. It's kind of like the um, makes me think of just the. Uh the fear of loss or catering towards the pain as opposed to the the uh, the positive or the pleasure side so that's sure. big now how about um so let's just say that um you know that uh, we we frame up our lead magnet we get it up we've got our blog we start you know throwing out some content um you know do, using the ILT you know model or method um, do you use uh, are there any tips as far as like do you use a pop up on the site uh, for the opt in or is there a certain spot or just any tips on you know, kind of bringing up more of those op- or increasing the opt-in percentage. Yeah, so it's you know we we haven't. I think we're about to test out a pop out a pop up. Um, we had it a long, long, long time ago, and it's tough. You know, with a blog, you're going to get a lot of repeat visitors. You know, like we get um, right now, we're right around a hundred thousand uniques a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like millions of, of hits a month, you know, because a lot of people come back every single day for, for new blogs. Um, so we've kind of been hesitant to do a pop-up, but but I know you can do them in just like the first time you see it or whatever. Um, the biggest thing, the number one change for me was I was doing videos and um, I wasn't getting a whole lot of leads. I think I was getting, I think I was getting like 600 at least I didn't think it was a lot of leads. I was getting like 600 a month, and I'm like, man, what do I do here? And it's so funny because sometimes you just got to go back to basics. And I heard someone talk about the simple, you know, call to action. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start saying that at the end of my video because I've kind of been doing them for so long that I just assumed whoever was watching it was already on my list. That simple change of me at the end of every single video, and my videos are usually three, four minutes. I don't keep, I don't do them very long. That simple change, my my, it went immediately from like 600 to 2,000 a month, and and so the key here with me saying that is when you start, it's not going to happen fast. Typically, at least it didn't for me. Um, but as you start to build a bigger footprint of, you know, I like to call them, they're like um, 
like online resources or online assets. You know, all these different blog posts of all these different categories are like little online assets, little soldiers work, working to get me more sales and get me more leads. And as you build a bigger footprint, when you tweak just a little bit, you see a big impact. In the beginning, tweaks don't, they may not matter that much, but you know, when you build a big footprint, a little tweak can make a big difference. And, and that's what I saw with mine. So having a, uh, you know, a mention inside of each blog of what your giveaway is, you know, hey, tell them top right of this page, make sure you enter your name and email. Um, and then also, in, if you're doing video, which I highly suggest because you know, it builds a lot of rapport, uh, if you're doing video, at the end, make sure you're doing a call to action that's not just share and comment. I mean, yeah, you should say that, but also clearly say, assume they're not on your list and you know, just tell them about your giveaway or uh, if you have multiple capture pages, tell them about a capture page. But I would suggest every single video that you do have some kind of call to action to become a lead at the end of it. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I, I think um, what's cool is we've, you know, we've kind of heard your journey from, you know, from shoot over a million bucks in, uh, in debt. And I can't help but, I mean, smile thinking about that is because that's crazy when I mean, you overcame that <laughs> all the way up to now. And so I want to, um, you did mention before about purpose and about how, you know, in the beginning you were just, you're kind of gritting it out, making it happen. And then purpose has really been woven into your business since then. So I'd love to just, you know, have you share you know, what, what makes you tick with your business? You know, how, you know, what do you feel your purpose is with your business and how do you end up discovering that? Yeah, so there, there's, you know, there's a lot of elements to it. Um, you know, first of all, I see success to me, if I boiled it down to two things, it would be growth and contribution. I have to be growing, okay? And that, that means uh, mentally, it means uh, spiritually, it means financially. You know, I do have, you know, you know, fairly aggressive financial goals as, as well as, you know, everything else. And so growth and then contribution. And contribution is, is a really interesting category. And, you know, one thing that you mentioned before about, you know, find your purpose and then go to work. Well, sometimes you find that purpose through going through your work. And sometimes you have to you have to take some action to find what it is. And the worst thing you can do is if you don't have purpose, is just kind of sit there and burn incense, and you know hopefully you find a purpose, right? Um, get to work wherever you are. Get to work and and really take action and, and get that figured out. So a couple things when it comes to the contribution kind of phase. Number one, um, I love I love it now that I'm a I consider myself a king and queen maker. Right, um, you know, I had uh, a client, you know, this year, my my good friend Tanya Eliza, um, you know, she did. We helped her with her very first product launch. She did first product launch at over a quarter million dollars. Um, so it was wow. like, man, that's awesome. And uh, now we have another uh, another client, uh, Mark Harbert, who's about to who do his first big product launch, and that's kind of I think it starts you know soon. Um, but um, we love doing that. We love king and queen creating, right? Um, helping someone get to the next level because, you know, for the first few years, it was it, honestly, just being honest here, I, I, I had to get out of my way. I had to dig myself out of my hole. And now I still have aggressive goals for myself, but it's just so much, it's so much fun seeing someone who hadn't accomplished something, go crush it. And, you know, it's just so cool seeing my different clients on stage and seeing different people. So that's a big passion for me. Uh, another big movement for me is uh, moving is, is inspiring my children. I have two boys, uh, 16 and 15. Um, both are awesome. You know, honor roll, uh, National Honor Society. One's a captain of his cross country team. And you know, for uh, my youngest birthday, we went out to South Dakota. We actually worked with the Boys and Girls Club out there and painted the you know the entire building and had a lot of fun out there. And we love doing that kind of stuff. And we actually, I know, you know, with Pencils of Promise, you know, you're doing the Guatemala. We're actually building a school in Guatemala through another um, uh, company, which is, you know, pretty cool. A different charity that I, you know, I found out about before before I talked to you. And um, so we love doing that kind of stuff and just, you know, being an inspiration. And so I have to, I feel that you're giving a, you're given a responsibility when you've done whatever you've done to be placed on a platform. Right now, we're on a platform of impact, and I don't, I don't know. You know, will the platform impact last my entire life? I don't know, uh, but I know for right now, I'm on a platform of impact that I can use to inspire other individuals, that I can use to 
um, you know, raise the conversation level in network marketing. You know, we, we, it's, a, it's a troubled profession sometimes in that, um, you know, some people are, you know, they, they're not taught the right ways. They're not taught posture. They're not taught that um, you don't have to be, you know, whatever. You don't have to play scarcity to, to, to succeed in this, in this profession. And so there's a lot of callings there, but the main things are growth and contribution, play big, Make an impact, inspire others, and just teach that message so it permeates everywhere, everyone, and everyone around me. And so, would you say that you're on fire? I'm on fire, man. I'm on fire. <laughs> Dude, that is so awesome, man. Um, I just love it. I mean, I love your business philosophy. I love um, just your your heart and uh, and authenticity. And um, I want to really make sure that we're um, also doing good back to you. So so tell us how we can support you. So I would love for for you to share with us, you know, something where people can take the next step with you. And um, and I think, guys, as you can see, Ray is just. A guy with so much knowledge and such a giving, you know, personality and heart, and I think that there's so much wisdom to learn from from Ray. So, uh, what do you have that you can share that um, we can take to, you know, get more information about what it is that you do and and uh, what have you? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it depends. If if you like podcasts, feel free to check out my podcast. Um, we've we started doing them um, maybe four or five months ago, and and last month they had almost ninety thousand downloads. So, you know, we're we're getting there. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, uh, you can check that out, rayhigdon.com forward slash podcast. If you are in really any niche and you want to know more details about the ILT method and, and how to apply that in, in your world, you can check out rayhigdon.com forward slash info marketing. Um, I actually do teach a little bit about product creation in that, but it's a, it's just a free training. Uh, I don't even have anything for sale there, believe it or not. I probably should, huh? But um, it's just a free training. It's about a, probably 45 minutes to an hour. And um, it really goes into depth on how to become an expert in your niche, how to use the ILT method, and, and rock it out. I love it. I love it. And, uh, and one more time with the link. Uh, that's rayhigdon.com forward slash info marketing, I-N-F-O marketing. Awesome, man. Well, I uh, just want to thank you again for your time here and sharing all the wisdom that you have. And I thank you from uh, from all of us with the Life on Fire Virtual Summit. So you guys, uh, take action. Hop on and grab that information that Ray suggested. Follow him. Hop on the podcast and uh, and stay up with Ray. And so you guys have an awesome rest of your day. We'll catch up with you on the next episode of the Life on Fire Virtual Summit. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>